Almond Press reports that Armenia is interested in purchasing MR SAM medium range anti aircraft missile systems from India. The purpose of this purchase is for Armenia to replace the Pekora S 125 anti aircraft missile systems that were manufactured in the Soviet Union. It has been utilizing air defense systems that date back to the Soviet period for many decades. And now, it wants to upgrade to more advanced systems from India. MR SAM is an advanced, path breaking air and missile defense system that provides ultimate protection against a variety of aerial platforms. MR SAM is a surface to air missile that was developed jointly by DRDO and Israel Aerospace Industries. The Indian Air Force, the Indian Army Force, the Indian Navy, and the Israeli Defense Forces all make use of it. The system comprises a command and control center, an advanced phased array radar, mobile launchers, and interceptors that are equipped with an advanced RF seeker. Israeli and Indian companies like Rafael, Tata, Bell, Larson and Tubro, and BDL, as well as a large number of private vendors, worked on developing the systems. Before being deployed by the Defense Forces, the systems were put through a battery of exhaustive tests by the Defense Research and Development Organization. Russia cannot assist Armenia militarily at this time because it is currently at war with Ukraine. However, Russia remained the most significant peacemaker in the Armenia-Azerbaijan war. After Azerbaijan won the war in 2020, Russian troops were dispatched to the contested Nagorno-Karabakh region to maintain peace. On the other hand, the West is back in the peace talks and getting closer to being the main mediator pushing Russia out. Russia's inaction as a security ally of Armenia and the refusal of the Collective Security Treaty Organization, of which Armenia is a member, to use collective defense during the recent military clash on the Armenian-Azerbaijani border seemed to mark a turning point for Armenian society. The public conversation is now dominated by the idea that Armenia should rethink its security policy. For the first time, Armenia's political leaders have publicly questioned whether the country's membership in the CSTO can still be seen as a serious security guarantee. Armenia's Prime Minister also said that his country would not host military drills for the Russian-led Collective Security Treaty Organization Alliance in 2023. Armenians have been persistent in their search for new and improved weaponry and so far, India has responded to their efforts by promising to supply them with ammunition, missiles and rockets. Additionally, Armenia has signed a deal worth multiple millions of dollars to acquire Panaka multi-barrel rocket systems which were used during the Kargil conflict that was fought between India and Pakistan. Several unconfirmed reports also say that Armenia is interested in getting its Su-30 fighters upgraded and its pilots trained from India. In 2019, Russia sold four Su-30s to Armenia. The Armenian flankers were missing important weapons, especially guided air-to-ground missiles. If these jets had fired unguided missiles into the fight, they would have lost and made little or no progress. India could make a big difference in how well Armenian planes work. The Indian Su-30 MKI is different from other flankers because it is a beautiful combination of weapons, sensors, and electronics from all over the world. The missiles include a version of India's BrahMos supersonic air-launched cruise missile, which gives the Su-30 MKI are important countermeasures and the Astra air-to-air -air beyond visual range missile, among others. So, Armenia can ask India for help and systems to improve the four flankers it already has so that they can be useful if it goes to war with Azerbaijan again, which is still a possibility. Seeing the growing defense ties between India and Armenia, the president of Azerbaijan was shocked when the Indian government decided to give deadly weapons worth 2,000 crores to Armenia. Azerbaijan's president, Ilham Aliyev, has said that no matter what weapons are given to Armenia, they will not be able to save it. Why, India must support Armenia. 
If we look at the relationship between India and Azerbaijan, we can see that they have friendly relations and growing bilateral cooperation. However, Azerbaijan and its ally, Turkey, have supported Pakistan on the Kashmir issue. This has upset India, and there was nothing stopping India from taking a side at this point. India also sent a different kind of message to the rest of the world when it sent arms and ammunition to Armenia during a war. This export is unique, not only because of its value and timing, but also because of the equipment that is being sent. And, India has already sent its Swathi radar to Armenia. This happened during the conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan, but the radar was just a way to find weapons, it didn't come with any major weapon systems that could deliver firepower. However, the current shipment includes big weapon systems and a lot of ammunition, which could help Armenia in the ongoing conflict. Without a UN mandate, India is very picky about sending troops or even supplying defense equipment. In 2003, the US asked India to join the Iraq Stabilization Force without a UN mandate, but India said no. India has only done this with its neighbors, Sri Lanka and the Maldives, when it comes to military and defense equipment. And why wouldn't India back Armenia in its fight against Azerbaijan? Armenia has agreed with India's position on Kashmir and sees the whole state of Jammu and Kashmir as part of India. And now is the time for India to show that it fully backs Armenia. Armenia also didn't take part in China's Belt and Road Initiative. This was good for India because Yerevan has been trying to make connections with fast-growing Asian countries so it can have a wider range of economic and political connections. In the past few years, there has been a strong political connection between Yerevan and New Delhi. This is because of the Armenian diaspora and the work of the Armenian government. Azerbaijan is also making it possible for India, Iran, and Armenia to work together. The hostility toward Azerbaijan comes from the 1990s, when Azerbaijan accused Iran of helping Armenia in the first Nagorno-Karabakh war, even though the Iranian government said it helped Azerbaijan. Since the 2020 Karabakh war, in which Azerbaijan took back the Armenian majority enclave, it had controlled for 20 years, Azerbaijan has been stepping up its efforts to get back other areas it thinks were historically its. Turkey has also been helpful. Their weapons, drones, and military advisors helped Azerbaijan win the 2020 war. After the war, the border between Iran and Azerbaijan was made up of some friendly Armenian land. A year later, Baku held military exercises with newly found PALs Turkey and Pakistan. Iran is home to a large number of Azeris. Tehran is worried that Azerbaijan's newfound nationalism, especially after its victory, could spark similar feelings and encourage separatist tendencies among its Azeri people, many of whom fought for Azerbaijan in 2020. And since the hijab case has been causing riots and protests in Iran for weeks, the country is now on edge. Also, during a virtual meeting last year, India invited not only its usual partners, but also Armenia. And India wanted to connect the Chabahar port to Iran's Bandar Abbas port, which is connected to the INSTC. The INSTC was originally planned to run through Azerbaijan's territory, but it will now run through Armenian territory. It is fascinating to note that when the Iranian foreign minister was in Armenia, for the first time, the Armenian defense minister was in India to discuss defense cooperation with the country. And both India and Iran is concerned with Baku's newfound aggression. Iran is concerned about Israeli interference in Azerbaijan, while Israel is a trustworthy and reliable partner for India. Nonetheless, for India, Azerbaijan's rhetoric on Kashmir matches Turkey's belligerence. Armenian air defense systems has been devastated by Israeli loitering drones. Iran, which has helped Russia with cost-effective drones, 
could do the same for Armenia by supplying locally made combat drones and loitering munitions. This would give Armenian forces a limited ability to deter other countries, especially Azerbaijan, 